You are listening to episode 9 of the Romance Class Podcast. This is a reading from romance novel The Kitchen When It Sizzles by Filipino author Chrissy Perilla. It's available as an ebook on Amazon and other retailers and in print in bookstores in the Philippines. Links to purchase the book will be included in the show notes. In this excerpt, Rachel Coates will be reading as main character Olivia and Gio Gahol will be reading the role of Nate. This was recorded at the Study by Enderan in Podium Mall, Ortiga Center, Metro Manila. The Kitchen When It Sizzles by Chrissy Perilla A pair of large hands covered Olivia's eyes as she read the morning newspaper. Her cup of coffee lay cold on the table. She had been nursing it, along with the same newspaper article she'd been reading and rereading, but not understanding, since she got up that morning. It wasn't a part of their usual routine. Usual was Nate getting up first, cooking breakfast. When the delicious scents get to be too much, she would pad barefoot to the kitchen to investigate. Or, if she still wasn't up, he would creep back into bed to wake her up. That was the best, whenever he decided she needed waking up. Guess who? A familiar low voice asked. His chin was planted on the top of her head. He was warm against her back. She could tell he was smiling, and it made her heart ache just a little bit more. Adam Levine, she guessed, naming her favorite rock musician, who for some reason reminded her of Nate. Adam Levine? Really? Nate said with disgust, letting go to swipe her coffee mug. Well, you knew my name well enough when you were screaming it last night. He took a sip of her coffee, only to spit it back out. What is this shit? It's as cold as yesterday's soup stock. Have I taught you nothing? Nate headed to the fridge to find something to cook for breakfast. He was rooting through the shelves, grumbling about the inadequacy. It was such a picture of happy domesticity that Olivia had to make him stop. Oh, why don't we grab breakfast at the weekend market instead? Sounds great. He agreed after checking the time. I'm too spent to even think about cooking. He wiggled his eyebrows suggestively, but Olivia didn't take the bait. Okay, uh, give me ten minutes to change, she said, before slipping off the bar stool to her coffee maker. She poured a fresh mug, then swigged it before pouring another one for Nate. She was glad for the caffeine in her system. She knew she was going to need it. Half an hour later, Olivia and Nate were back in the cheery bustle of their favorite weekend market, surrounded by interesting food finds, mouth-watering cooking aromas, and friendly faces who were all on a first-name basis with them. Thankfully, there was no Mrs. M in sight. They made quite a mismatched pair. She was all thoughtful and somber. He was a picture of a giddy high school boy. Despite being a regular, Nate buzzed with excitement, cajoling Olivia to try this or that, from local herb cheeses made from goat's milk to moussaka from a small Greek caterer, to toasted pastillas made by nuns in a convent south of Manila. But her spirits failed to lift, and she chose just to take a seat among the monoblock chairs set up in the middle of the market while waiting for Nate to finish purchasing breakfast. I haven't told you about Singapore yet, have I? Nate's smile grew even wider, like he had news he was dying to spill. His arms were laden with bandesal panini stuffed with sisig and longanisa and paper cups of freshly squeezed sugarcane juice. Um, Liam's ready to take me back. Uh, There's a new restaurant concept he wants to try and he wants me to take the reins. That's great news, Olivia replied, trying her best to sound cheerful but ultimately failing. You don't sound like you're happy for me. Nate's eyebrows furrowed as he looked at her. But don't be silly. Of course I'm happy for you. Why wouldn't I be? Olivia sipped at her sugarcane juice, studiously avoiding Nate's searching look. I don't know. You're giving off this vibe. You've been like this all morning. Nate's frown rearranged itself into concern. Is there anything bothering you? Olivia took a deep breath. Nate had provided her with the opening that she was looking for. But was she ready? Or more importantly, was she doing the right thing? Uh, Nate, we need to talk. I don't like how that sounds. Nate put his sandwich down. His face was an indecipherable mask that waited for her to make the next move. It's just, I think, maybe... Olivia struggled for the right words, but she knew there weren't any. However she phrased it, it would still come out wrong. I mean, the timing is right and all with 
Liam offering you a new job, and then there's Billy to think about, she mumbled, unable to say it outright. Nate's frown was back, the lines deeper than usual, his scar unusually noticeable. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Just, just get straight to the point, Liv. I think we should stop seeing each other, she blurted, the words coming out in a torrent. Nate cocked a disbelieving eyebrow. Because? A corner of his mouth quirked up like he was waiting for the choke's punchline. It's time to move on, Nate. Olivia set her shoulders squarely and dug deep to find enough courage to look at him in the eye. We've always known that this, this setup, this, us, it was, it was always a temporary thing. As perfect as it might have been, we were going to break up eventually. And now's a good time as any with you moving back to L.A. and me being especially busy with work. She let her words trail off. She knew her argument wasn't very convincing. Nate stared at her. Bullshit. His lips thinned out in a line and his brows furrowed back again when he realized there was no punchline forthcoming. What's this really about, Liv? Was it, was it something I did? You can't be serious. This is so screwed up. I go away for a week and I come back to this? Please, Nate, please understand. God, you, you are serious. He ran his fingers through his hair, unable to believe what she was saying. It's not like I want to break up. Then don't. Nate banged his fist on the table, not caring that he was starting to attract the curiosity of people sitting nearby. Please, don't make this more difficult than it should be. It's for the best, Nate. I, I really thought hard about it, and I think it's the best thing for us both, she explained, clutching her paper cup to stop her hand from shaking. Come on, Olivia. Hey, we can work this out. Give us a chance. Olivia had to tear her eyes from Nate's passionate entreaties. If she had to look at him much longer, she would have given in to his pleas. Enough. Nate, enough. I know these past few weeks with you may have been close to perfect, but it's only lulled us into thinking that it could work. Nothing has changed. In the long run, it just won't. Just Let's just cut our losses and call it quits now. But last night... Olivia cut him short. Was goodbye. The finality in Olivia's voice reverberated across the table. A gamut of emotions ran through Nate's face. Disbelief, irritation, anger until it settled on a wry smile. It was what Olivia expected, but seeing it unfold made her heart twinge. I wish she told me what you were planning beforehand. He conceded. If I knew it was one last screw, I would have made the most of it. The coarseness of his language almost made her flinch, but she stood her ground. It wasn't a screw, she wanted to argue, but to what point? It was only a matter of time, she shrugged. Might as well do it now and split up on our own terms, right? While all is still well, I don't want another horrible breakup. Civil is the best way to end things. And just look at the timing. You have your job back, so you're leaving anyway. I'm sure you'll forget me soon enough. You're never lacking for female companionship, are you? And there's always Billy. You can get back with her once you're in L.A. again, she said, her voice barely hiding the bitterness. If you ever stopped seeing her in the first place. For a moment, she thought he was going to disagree. To say that there was nothing between him and Billy. There was a moment of confusion on Nate's face before his lips hardened into a thin, straight line. He spewed back. Yeah. You're... You're right. At least Billy doesn't play games. Contempt twisted his face into something Olivia wasn't familiar with. The comparison hurt. She immediately regretted bringing it up. Nate's knuckles were white as he rested his fists on the table. Olivia wondered if he'd lash out, if he'd argue some more, but he held back. People were already giving them curious looks as it was. He dumped his half-eaten sandwich into a nearby trash bin. Well, it looks like that's it for us. We have to admit, it was fun while it lasted, wasn't it, Olivia? They walked out the market civilly. Not like they just broke up. It didn't count as a breakup, Olivia reminded herself. It wasn't like they really had a relationship in the first place. They even shook hands before going their separate ways, with Nate politely insisting that she keep in touch. If ever you find yourself in L.A., look me up. I'll buy you dinner. They both knew the offer was a farce, but it was easier to pretend that all was well. She hailed a cab as soon as she spotted one, unwilling to walk the rest of the way back to her apartment. But she was going to cry. 
She wanted it to be in the privacy of her own home. Thank you for listening to our excerpt from The Kitchen When It Sizzles, 2015 Filipino Reader's Choice Award winner for the Romance in English category. We hope you enjoyed it and please check out the book. Subscribe to our podcast to hear more romance novels written by Filipino authors. Visit romancepodcast.com to find out more about what we do and romanceclassbooks.com to find more of our books. Thank you.